after the parliamentary shenanigans this week plunged Theresa May's future into fresh doubt, I bumped into a Tory backbencher in the House of Commons bar. I wanted to know what he rated his boss's chances were of surviving the summer. Tricky couple of weeks coming up. I said to him, you must be getting a bit worried. He thought for a second, then said, nah. I think we'll get out of the group easy enough. Quarters might be a bit tricky though. Brazil most likely, but it's worth a few quid on us. I got 16 to 1. World Cup fever has reached Westminster, you see. And with it, the relentless sense of optimism that England might, just might do something spectacular. I found myself briefly tempted to stick a couple of quid on. Prime Minister Theresa May is under pressure over Brexit, image, Rex, Shuttershock, but it's madness. Not just because politicians are terrible tipsters but because I've fallen into this trap before. What fuels this hopeful mood as we head into tournaments? Is it optimism or arrogance? We seem to drift into these World Cups, and Euros, and even the Eurovision Song Contest with an iron belief that we should be winning them. People tear up the form book, ignore the statistics and press on in the belief we'll come out on top. Which brings us to Brexit. However you voted, no one can be under the impression that things are going well. The myth that we can come away from the negotiations with some sort of good deal is up there with thinking, we'll get our hands on the World Cup. But listen to some of the hardcore and they are already convinced it's all going to go well. It isn't. It's going to be very, very unpleasant. Here muddy, labor on the right track as Britain's railways are in decline already, banks are planning to move step out of the country. Manufacturing, tech outfits and even fancy dress firms are heading for the exit too. We are going to see a squeeze on jobs, on the economy as a whole, and, in particular, problems for the NHS and social care as free movement ends. Doing business with the EU is going to get harder. But still, many people cling to the belief that we can muddle through because we're Britain. Maybe it's time to show a little humility and reevaluate our place in the world. Maybe think again and have another crackety vote. Theresa May, at last week's meeting of world leaders, didn't even get the chance to sit down with Donald Trump. And that was at the G7, where she was up against only a handful of other countries. We were at the back of the queue. And that's how it's going to be from here. You won't hear it at this World Cup but there's one football chant we should pay attention to. A Leeds United one, as it happens, we're not famous anymore.